Hey, uh, waiting for it. I totally apologize. I got cut loose from the conversation. I didn't actually catch uh, the last two minutes. Can you mind go ahead and repeat that? Uh, yeah, this is uh, my name is Jeff Rainforth. I I write for uh, war correspondent Pat Dollard, and also for the Wayne Dupre Show. Um, we have word. I got word from uh, my Iraq War vet friend um, uh, Brian Colfidge who said that the FAA has declared a no-fly zone over the Bundy Ranch. And yeah, yeah. There yeah, that's been confirmed. He's trying to clarify that. And then also, yeah, we've got that confirmed about five times, bro. It's all good. Um, it, it, it really sucks. We know that there's a flight pattern of uh, uh, different uh, 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 Army, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that are doing some uh, personnel changes right now that might be going over that flight pattern. Um, they've had to reroute, and yeah, we're definitely aware that FAA is considered that whole area no fly. Uh, anything else you wanted to add, bro? That wasn't covered. Uh, yeah. Uh, who do you, do you want everyone showing up out there? Who do you want coming out there, and what should they bring if they do come out to support uh, Clive? Okay, cool. Um, yeah, let me also give you the uh, playback number. This was covered earlier at five five nine seven two six. 1399 is the callback number that you can actually call again later and get the remainder of this portion of the uh, phone calls that have been going on the last few days. And then that uh, taped conversation, which was the last one we recorded, uh, will also give you the one prior, and then that one will give you the one prior. Uh, you would press code pound 9762 pound. And uh, what we're asking is, you know, if you're going out there, you want to go peacefully uh, due to the uh, ranger's request as a peaceful protester to help support. If you've got equipment and supplies you want to bring, that's great. Uh, if any of those happen to be munitions of any kind, uh, definitely read the uh, laws of Nevada and make sure uh, the, the, uh, the state laws, uh, based on your path from point A to point B, to make sure that uh, you're not doing anything federally illegal in any way, shape, or form. Um, we're asking people to kind of you know, stand down for now. We have a rally point not fully confirmed yet, though, uh, would be the... Uh, a local Indian reservation that's offered to take in some refugees that might be having issues uh, for some federal protection. That's not 100% confirmed yet. I'm still trying to work down this call list to find uh, Diana. Uh, Diana, then uh, I want to chime in with you ASAP, so I'm watching for your number, hon. Uh, make sure you, you chime in, and uh, she was our last boots on the ground. Uh, since we switched to the Q&A queue, uh, there's a lot, uh, lot slower movement. I'm taking everybody one at a time instead of people speaking over each other just to make this call a little more peaceful. Um, I, I assume once I take it off Q&A, it's going to turn into a cluster, and all the people that have been waiting uh, patiently uh, will get the mood from that queue. So i got to kind of move on to the next guy, if you don't mind, Jeff. Right on. Thank you. All right. Appreciate you. Uh, Deborah, you're on 4507. Deborah. Hello. Hello. Oh, you don't sound like a Deborah. I apologize. 4507, that's your number, right? Yeah, that's me. Sorry. Hey, um, been talking with a few guys, and I had a uh, an idea for you. Peacefully, Go of ahead. course. But right now, what's going on on the West Coast is because of Senator Harry Reid, and what was mentioned to me by a, a couple of high um, friends. Um, somehow, we need to organize something at Harry Reid's location as a protest going on there. Peacefully, of course, but just get this word out that China is the reason why. Bundy is going to lose his ranch. That's a $5 billion deal for solar panels. Yeah, it leads back to a variety of things. Would you agree that we're leaning towards pretty much eminent domain then? Sorry? Uh, eminent domain, are you familiar with that term? Eminent domain, uh, no. All right, well, like they say at my work, uh, GTS, bro, Google that shit. <laughs> and uh, eminent domain is uh, when basically the Fed pretty much does what they want, takes any land that they want. Um, and that's pretty much what it's down to, a, a variety of different things. Are in. The phone is breaking cows out so bad. You say yeah, it doesn't sound like cows and tortoises anymore. Um, I have just been warned that I have to go pick somebody up, so this is going to get really weird for a little while. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to be here to monitor the call. Um, this is 
going to get real interesting. All right, I'm going to take a minute. Uh, man, I can't take anybody off Q&A. All right, tell you what. I'm going to take a bunch of people off of Q&A right now, but I'm going to leave everybody else on. So let's try this. You guys can be civil for the next half an hour. I'm about to open up the line to a couple people that have been in line. If you guys can be cool for the next uh, 20 minutes or so, I have to leave and come back. But if you guys can kind of handle the conversation for me, that'd be really cool of you. All right. Uh, well, you're open. Are you there? Yep. Still here. Call R2 right. is here. All right. I want you guys both to hang on the line, too. Um, I'm looking for a couple numbers that are in the queue that I want to open up and uh, see if I can put a couple people in line. Uh, this goes back on. He yeah, has some good information. Hang on, man. I'm uh, letting some more people in. Nine one six, you're on lock. Hi. Um, I'm just a civilian, and uh, our mom who did the Freedom Runs. And I was just wondering if you guys are going to organize any kind of freedom runs because with the economy, a lot of people cannot afford a vehicle or the trip up there. Uh, you know, that's always an idea. Obviously, uh, obviously that's, we haven't really been talking about that right now. Um, we'd love to do one and to coordinate one if you've got – I know I have some people that uh, are definitely in that uh, – you know, I, I hate to put labels on people, you know, in the uh, rider category um, that could probably coordinate something uh, if, if well planned. Uh, at, at this point, I don't know how long this is going to take on, and I don't know if people have time to head out there. Um, I'm ready to do a, some sort of crowdfund. If people wanted to chime in financially in some way, shape, or form, we could probably get that arranged in the near future um, and just make sure that goes to the right place. Um, I'm going to go ahead and unlock a couple other people here so you guys can get a chance to talk. i got to split for a couple of minutes. Um, if you're hearing yourself unmuted, go ahead and talk. Um, all right, that's exactly the opposite of what I wanted to hear, so you're getting remuted. <laughs> Unreal. All right. Uh, if you heard yourself get unmuted, you can go ahead and speak for it. I've got about six people that are open on the call right now. Hello? Anybody else? Chime in. Yeah, you're on there. Okay, sweet. Uh, if you guys can kind of, you know, ask each other some questions, ask each other where you're from or something, I need uh, all the people that are unneeded right now to go ahead and carry that conversation for about 15 minutes for me. Uh, forgive me for putting you on the spot like that. But uh, I'm unmuting another number that I recognize, 3619. You're also off. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. So yeah, again, feel free to speak amongst yourselves here in a minute. Um, hopefully you guys can be cool and not talk over each other. Uh, Cisco, you're going to be locked as soon as I can get this computer to sit still. So many people are queuing in and out, I can't uh, stay on top of you right now. So, so what's the next what's the next step for this besides um, how many how many people are heading out that way that you guys have heard of? Uh, again, that's all kind of conjecture. You know, it, it could vary from you know three, four, five hundred to you know we're hearing a lot of claims of in the thousands, but we can't you know fully verify that right now, especially in this Q and answer mode. Um, I'd like to appeal to the people that are actually boots on the ground. Make sure you press star six to chime in. Uh, I'll try to get to you right when I get back here in just a little bit. I'm going to open up a couple other people that I recognize their numbers. Uh, um, sorry, to, sorry. To, bro. Um, you guys need a secure uh, place to talk. It's unseen.is. It's all now we've got nothing. Uh, we're going to keep it as public as possible. No, I know. I'm talking about for people who are calling. All right, I'm getting a bad echo now. Are you on speakerphone, sir? Me? Yeah. No. All right, I apologize. Somebody else was catching your uh, echo back there a minute ago. Um, go ahead with the information. Um, for people who are trying to get out to um, the Bundy Ranch or Nevada, wherever, 
If you're going to be trying to confirm it, you need a secure place to talk. Go to unseen.is. It's completely all encrypted. Um, you can upgrade for more encryption. I, I don't know much about it. I just this is what uh, a lot of the groups and communities are using. Um, that's a great place to continue talking past the open public realm. Take my drift. That was unseen.us. No, no, dot is. 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 Okay. For your privacy. All right. Uh, did you have anything to add? I'm going to clear open a couple people unless you had something else to say. Oh no, I'm good. You good? You can whatever. I'm good, man. No, it's cool. I appreciate you chiming in, man. Um, you know, we've got a lot of good people that have come on board throughout the last 24 to 48 hours. It's, uh, it means a lot, man, knowing at least some people are at least getting involved. Right? You know, I, I was getting to a point where I was starting to think I was the only guy that's awake. So, starting to hey, bro. Start. hey, Brian, this is Mary from Michigan. Brian. Yeah, hey, how are you? Yeah. Good, this is Mary. I understand you got to get going, but somebody said something about transportation. There is a Bundy Ranch Resistance Transportation Facebook page. Guys, got to get on Facebook. 850 members at the moment. I'm sure it's only been up for a couple of days. Again, that's Bundy Ranch Resistance Transportation. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Another thing I want to say before I hang up, if you don't mind me cutting in here, um, I know Clive is catching a lot of slack. Even Megan Kelly on Fox is saying, you know, he should have listened to the law. And same thing. I'm like saying I'm from Michigan. Same thing's happening up here with a farmer named Mark Baker. And what they're doing is what we're afraid they're going to do to the Second Amendment is change the law. So what was lawful yesterday won't be lawful talking- tomorrow. You'll be, you'll be a felon. He's got a certain type of pig, and they put it on the invasive species list and threatened him with a $1,000 fine per pig per day. And he's been fighting this here in Michigan. He's a retired Air Force. Uh, He's been taking it to courts, and uh, they were going to slaughter his pig. So, I mean, this isn't a one-man thing. So don't think that Clive has done anything wrong. Our government has turned on us. And he's not the only one. So just uh, make sure and do your research. Um, see, the, they made the farmers' ditches waterways so they could regulate that. There's a big movement, huge land grab, call it Agenda 21, uh, going on. Let's look into it. Bakers, Acres, Bakers, Green Acres. He's All right, I got a wireless now. caller 3619. Wireless caller 3619. What do you need to say, boy? Hey, um, I was just wondering... If you guys need anything, I mean, I, I'm in Iowa, but I don't have a problem driving down there. Um, if, you know, if you need more people, I'm willing to take people with me and head down there with supplies. We, we appreciate that. Uh, some more female energy will definitely uh, do everybody good from now. So uh, I'll make sure you, uh, you bring your peaceful T-shirt and uh, try not to come off like too much of a liberal hippie. <laughs> and uh, I know you're there, to, you're, you're there to support everybody, you know, all the same, you know, but uh, make sure, you know, any people that are agitators know to, to, to stand down and maybe you can uh, perform some sort of, uh, you know, comms and security when you get down there if, if you're heading down there as well. Okay, and if we confirmed if we can get through or not, I mean, even to uh, the reservation? I, I, I recommend trying either or both. Uh, as of right now, we're not fully positive until we uh, get the right person back on this phone call. And even then, you know, what what, what, what is truth anymore? You know, that's what we're trying to find find out. It's uh, Everybody's got their perceptions of what they see, and they're seeing a lot of things online right now, and some of that's uh, fully unconfirmable. Um, you know, it, it, we can only chime in. If seven people are saying the same thing, maybe we could raise our uh, truth level on that subject, but until we've got actual boots that are saying, here, I'm seeing helicopters, you know, and know that the helicopters are in front of that person, but, you know, a lot of conjecture right now. So try to stay tuned. Okay. Whatever we can get from boots on the ground is what's important right now. Do you mind if I move on uh, to the next call, man, or do you want to add? No, that's fine. Yeah, I appreciate you chiming in. 
Um, as well, I gave you a chance a minute ago. I'm going to give you a chance again. I'm getting a lot of feedback from you, brother. I'm right here. Are you yeah, there? Can you back up? All right, yeah. I just wanted to let you know this is Colorado 2. Um, All right, hey, Colorado yeah. 2. Thanks for coming in, and I'm going to actually keep you uh, in the queue as long as I can. Okay. Are you still there? Yeah, I just moved you over to the inside queue. So, are you still there? I'm still here. All right, cool. What did you have to say, Blake? Oh, I, I just want to thank you for for running this network. Um, I think this is a great service to to everybody here. Um, you're doing a hell of a job, and um, yeah, I'm proud to be a part of this. Actually, um, uh, awesome. It, it means yeah. a lot, man. We're I'm in here. So I'm out here in Colorado on fire in the EMT. Um, let's keep her. Um, and, um, you know, I would encourage everybody who's, who's out there to, uh, to join Oath Keepers, um, because of the, um, community preparation plan that people are supposed to be putting together and, and kind of building your group. And, uh, and the, probably the most important thing I think right now is the comms net, the, the comms nets that are building right now. And, um, you know, I think there's going to be an important uh, need over there to have comms net set up. You know, and Ham, uh, the, you had that guy earlier asking about uh, comms, and you know, there's I think that's only 70 centimeters um, band, and if you can get uh, six meter down there, start broadcasting a 40 meter, you know, bouncing it. That's what we want. Hey, brother, I've got a boots on the ground that just called in. Diana, how are you, hon? Hey, you have been waiting forever. You've had me in the queue. <laughs> yeah, I pulled you ahead of a couple of people. I, I apologize. It's been freaking hard. So I wish I had seven heads and eight arms and uh, at least a couple of secretaries right here handling what I'm doing as one man right now trying to make this work. But uh, you're are you by, by the tribal res right now by chance? Um, we actually drove out there, and there's nobody around. The office is closed. There is an emergency oh, number, and it goes to a cell number, and she didn't answer. So we're going to attempt to get a hold of her again in the morning. So there's a direct line to her and on an emergency number. Um, we sat up on top of uh, the garage at Pella Station watching the traffic coming through. I did not see any Hummers coming through. All right, Are you well, there? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't hear, sorry, uh, again, a lot of things, but no, I really didn't want to hear from you. I'm going to leave you in the queue, not me, and you're actually boosting. Um, I'm sorry to say it's kind of a boost. You had, uh, you know, a couple of things. Obviously, we, we passed you on, and uh, unfortunately, that office is closed now. The fact that you're on, are you? Oh, you're cool. breaking up. Ryan, you're All breaking right. up. I can't hear you. I apologize. Is this any better? Yeah, it's a little better. Um, so are you at the res, on the res, near the res? Nope, I actually headed back. Ah, crap. There's nothing All going right. on out there. It's quiet. And I drove by Nellis on the way back. Nothing going on at Nellis. Um, nobody has seen any Hummers coming through. Waited enough time for them to hit Vegas. If they were in fact coming... They could have gone down the 160 and gone the back way to Creech Air Force Base. And that's the only other route that they would have taken. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so. That, that's and kind I of a letdown. I was hoping well, here from uh, Native Americans when they called in. We're just going to have to wait for the office to open and uh, hope that uh, that information we got earlier is legit and uh, we can set that up as a rally point at this point. Um, I'm going to bring some more people in here as a Q&A. Uh, just so uh, I got one of the Intel guys just chimed in. Cisco. Two four one two Cisco. Yeah, hey, you're Brian. a go. Sorry about that. That's okay. This is Charles. This is Charles from San Jose. Okay, so I did a uh, little research for everybody out there, um, and yeah, confirming the uh, elements. I don't know if it's old news, but literally there is a story on Reuters that was confirmed in 2012 that uh, Senator Reid he has his son working to correlate, at the time, they were working on a plan to take 9,000 acres 
a desert site near Clark County, right? And I'm assuming that's where uh, the Bunny Ranch is located or near there, um, for development for a solar farm or something like that. And then there's a later story now by Breitbart and whatnot that, that indicates and it, cross, it crosses in where it's related to basically the Bundy farm. So this is not BS. It's, it's, it's actually been reported by at least a recruitable news thing, even back in 2012. So just for people dealing with this, Senator Reid, just like the others, have been basically pretty much acting in a treasonous manner, I would call it. But um, I just wanted to get that reviewed and, and report it back. Now, as a report for the foreign entities, the, there is something on the reviewed by the Cornell University Law School. That was a document, but it doesn't say anything about foreign individuals. It just says cross um, agency training and stuff like that. So um, that, that's pretty much. I wanted to just look that up for you and get that out there. So I totally appreciate you chiming in, man. And uh, you know, hopefully, some people took note of what you just said. I, uh, it's good to have you know people pulling information. Uh, you know, as much confirmed intel as you guys can keep pulling in and keep bringing it in. I am totally uh, only dedicated right now to this phone call. I'm not watching uh, Facebook uh, other than uh, relaying messages right now. And uh, I apologize if I have not gotten back to so many people trying to contact me on Facebook, um, especially MJ. MJ, you're doing great work over there. Uh, got MJ Liberty is definitely uh, taking some notes for me, and I really appreciate you, and I hope you're still on the call. Um, but she's been texting me every so often and uh, taking notes for me and t taking some minutes. To, if anybody else uh, you know, has any more important information, I'm going to pull you into the queue right now. Uh, still waiting for uh, Chief Mark Kessler to chime in. He hit me on Facebook. Uh, 30 minutes ago, and I'm still trying to get him to, uh, he said he was going to get on the call, and uh, Chief Kessler, if you can put yourself in the queue to speak, um, and then answer me back on Facebook, I'll let you talk right now if I can. Um, Cisco, I'm going to go ahead and move on, do you mind? Uh, yeah, no, no problem, Brian, but, uh, by the way, thanks for doing a great job. You, you are a Paul Revere, just like Mark Levin calls all of us, so stay safe, and I'll just listen in. That was pretty awesome, I really appreciate that, man. Um, moving on. Uh, we've got uh, another wireless caller, and well, you just got cut, I think. Well, are you still there? Oh, shit. Brian? Yeah, yeah, wireless caller, go ahead. Okay, yeah, um, I live in Central Texas. I was calling about, um, a couple people called about the trains with the uh, tanks and whatnot. Um, I have a friend of mine who works for BNSF Railroad. Uh, BNSF Railroad operates heavily throughout Texas, um, as a lot of people know. Um, he works the night shift. He said that there's constantly tanks of these military equipment moving all the time. He's a carman. He he does a lot of work on the on the actual train cars. So they're constantly moving from through Texas, getting shipped here and there. So I, I really I don't want to put anybody down by saying, oh, your your thoughts are wrong. But it is a constant feed of military equipment that's that's moving on the train system through through Texas. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. It's all about perception, man, and that's kind of what we're trying to conquer and, and not divide right now. Um, you know, you got all kinds of reports, and we appreciate those reports. You see movement, we want to know, but we need to also be able to verify that and be, uh, you know, quell that. And what, that's pretty much what you just kind of did. Uh, although, you know, we're not 100% positive whether or not what their intentions are, but you can verify that, A, this happens a lot. You might want to chill out. It happens. Um, as far as that aspect of this whole conversation that's gone on, is that basically what you're getting at? Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm going to give him a call tomorrow. He's he's obviously asleep right now. I'm in, I'm in uh, Oregon working right now. I'm not even home. So I'm going to give him a call tomorrow and see if he's seen any movement because um, he, he works the uh, swing shift, so he would have seen something tonight, or I should say last night. Um, if he did see any movement, he'll let me know if he has seen anything. So cool. I picked... Pictures and videos, man. That's what's going to confirm this intel right now. We've got a lot of a lot of hearsay and secondary conjecture, but we need definite uh, oh, yeah, that's video. Yeah, I'm going to do is get pictures, video, anything like that, anything you might see um, as far as that goes. Um, just one other thing I wanted to say. Well, two things. Brian, you're doing a great job. Um, I appreciate it. Keeping everything monitored and everything else. Um, the other thing is that, like, and it's been said a hundred times over, you know, cooler heads, for, you know, need to prevail right now. We don't need a bunch of hot heads out there. We don't need to give them any reasons to take an aggressive action towards us because 
we screw up and fire a first shot or something like that. That does not need to happen. We need to stay cool. Let them be the fault. You know, let them be the blame for everything. Let the American public see what the federal government's doing to us. Let them be the cause for it all. Oh, man, it makes me feel good knowing there's more brothers like you out there thinking a lot like I do, man. Uh, I appreciate your input. Um, anything you want to close with, bro? You give me a hoo or a God bless America or something? <laughs> Hoorah, step or five. And, and uh, you know, like I said, everybody just, you know, keep cool, keep doing it, you know, keep your oaths that you've taken. And, you know, prayers are going up constantly. Um, I mean, this this kills me. I'm... I'm you know, states away from my house, and I've got my wife and my son in Texas, and I'm and I'm kind of a little freaked out because of the stuff that's being started to get with the Red River, you know, and all that kind of yeah. stuff. So uh, that seems yeah. like pounds, that the next uh, <clears throat> Ground Zero is also the Red River location. Um, that's Ground Two, and uh, it, you know, this is happening throughout the region. I mean, there's some eminent domain is pretty much how I'm looking at it. Call it what it is. Um, you know, land grabbing plain and simple. Um, a lot of people are working out of pocket right now, and uh, we need some sheriffs, we need some governors, we need some media attention to step up and uh, call this situation. Uh, there's plenty of people that have volunteered, to, obviously, to offer support, moral support, <coughs> as well as armed support. Um, and, you know, although that's there, we're, we're still hoping that, again, just like you said, Bill, uh, how heads prevail. I'm going to move on to the next caller. Is that cool? All right. All right, we All right. God bless you guys, and, and uh, keep it up. Hey, may the force be with you. I appreciate it, man. Hey, guys. Uh, yeah, what's going Long on? Right here? Oh, uh, I've been listening in for a few hours now. Um, I Okay, now, you, I understand that Mrs. Bundy has requested more peaceful protesters. That's correct. Hey, if you could do me a favor, hon, I need you to back off the phone just a little bit. You're coming in kind of loud and fuzzy. Uh, we're seeing your red line over here. Uh, I, I can hear you. I just need you to kind of back off from the phone a little bit. How's that? Better? Go ahead. Uh, uh, okay, so more. let me take you off speaker. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, that's huge. How's that? A lot better. I appreciate it. Okay. Now she has requested... More, I'm getting ready to set up an event on, on Facebook. I've got a pretty big following. Uh, she has requested peaceful protesters. Where does she want those people to be? Just to the ranch? Uh, actually, it would be nice to, to get some people that are on the inside to uh, go ahead and verify exactly where they need us to be because uh, we just had a secondary rally point that is just uh, not working out right now. Uh, we had somebody call in to say that the, a local res was willing to take in some of these people. Uh, we know the ground zero in that vicinity. Uh, we've heard that people are being pulled over. Some people have been detained. Some people have been let go. There was some rumor of uh, gun confiscation, um, and we're assuming that those are hotheads coming in wearing BDUs and uh, AR-15 strapped to the hood. You know, <laughs> uh, We're highly recommending that everybody come in, just like you said, as peaceful protesters. If they're going to happen to carry arms, make sure they're uh, lawful arms and they're uh, you know not loaded at the time, uh, just to avoid any other situations. And if you're bringing you know illegal munitions in that area, uh, based on that law for that state, I highly recommend you not do that right now. Um, you know, okay. just to cover your own hands and not start a situation. Sorry to swear. All right, I did contact Gadsden Air Corps and left a message on the no-fly zone. I know that they saw it; they did not respond but I know that they've seen it. Um, another thing I would like for everyone to remember is that Sheriff Mack and the CSPOA is there. They're supposed to have a meeting of all the CSPOA in Las Vegas Monday. Uh, there have also been, there's a big support from the Arizona legislature, a large delegation, I believe 40 people are headed that way. Uh, several delegations from state legislatures want to know what is going on. Yeah. Uh, do and, we? Uh, is there any way we can get our bikers and our truckers headed that way? How about if uh, Mr. Bundy throws a nice old hog roast? Uh, <laughs> we highly recommend that. You know, if we can get more peaceful protesters, we're trying to get more media there just to kind of help quell the situation. Although that 
you know, can be, make the situation more volatile. Usually when cameras are, are there, uh, people pushing their authority, so to speak, uh, usually stand down uh, a lot faster. Right. And uh, that's exactly what we need, you know. So if you've got some media outlets and, and if you've got, a, you know, uh, a, a network, feel free to keep blasting out this conversation and uh, let other yes. people know we're here. This is happening and, uh, you know, we're just asking people to keep spreading the word, Facebook, you name it. Uh, Are you familiar with uh, Dennis Michael Lynch? Uh, no, Dennis not Michael my Lynch? head. A lot, no? of, a lot okay. of names running he's through a, my head right now. That's fine. Uh, he's a regular, I'm sure you know Megan Kelly. On Fox? No? All right, that's mm-hmm. okay. He's He's got a huge following. Um, they have stayed in contact with me all day on Facebook, and we did get her over to, uh, his producer over to Ryan at Ground Zero. Okay. I have been staying in touch with him. Very uh, good. Also, uh, if we can send down your chain of command then, we need, uh, we need Brian back on this call. He is the mediator for the ranch. Um, okay. There's a couple people that grabbed his number yesterday. I literally will push him ahead of anybody right now if he can chime in. He is the mediator uh, for the ranch to all the militias that are on Ground Zero right now. So if you can get him to call back in, um, I would I would push him ahead. And anybody else who's uh, added me on Facebook in the near future, uh, if you've got other people that need to go ahead, you go ahead and message me now, and uh, I'll, I'll try to find you in the queue and, and get you pushed ahead if you're at ground zero right now. Um, anything else you needed to add, ma'am? I'm, I need to move on. i got about 22 people in the queue. That's fine. Thank you. I right, really appreciate you, and uh, you keep coming back in. I'm actually watching your number now. So, uh if, if you need to chime in, come back in the queue. I'll try to keep watching for you, okay? i got to rack out. I'm at the end of 15 hours. Talk to you guys later. All right. Are you going to be staying up for a minute? Uh, no, I, I'm I'm done for the day. I'm, okay. I've been up a long cool. time. Oh, I'll yeah. Be back All, right. All right. We'll catch you tomorrow. Uh, I'll probably start it up at 8 o'clock Central again tomorrow. Uh, PM. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate okay. Thanks. Um, I got another caller on the line. It's only coming up is Barnabas. Oh yeah. Well, you know, I'm almost here. Uh, well, 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 uh, Mr. Barnabas, I definitely need you to back off of that phone, sir. If you're on speakerphone or a blue. Oh, speaker sorry, but how about the, how about now? Yeah, it sounded like you were kind of snoozing on the phone there. Uh, if you want to pull it out of your nose, that'd be great. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, I've been listening. I just want to say this has really been just the greatest night of entertainment I've had in a while. You guys are hilarious. That, that's you're really hilarious. hard to say. Oh, you're hilarious. This is, uh, that's all I had to say. Uh, definitely need you to back off the phone. I, I can't tell you. It sounds like you're in a cavern right now, man. If uh, You could definitely back off. You've redlined uh, quite a bit here just in the last few words. Oh, let me turn the game down. How about now? Oh, a lot better. What did you just say, sir? I'll say you guys have been hilarious. This this is oh, the greatest the greatest thing. I, I say you guys are just hilarious. Really made my night. Uh, I, I appreciate that. When you say hilarity, uh, I mean hopefully uh, you're kind of taking it serious too, right? I mean I'm trying to be lighthearted and let everybody have their peace, but uh, yeah, you know everybody's got their patience and tolerance. Oh, absolutely not. I'm 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 really not taking this seriously at all, and and that's really I think why it is so funny because it's. You you really, I, I think that none of you really understand what you're up against here, and there's really Go no ahead. way, there's really no way at all that this ends in any way that you think it's going to. Go ahead. How, how do you, you think it's going to end? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Dave. you got the floor. Well, how do you think it's going to end? Well, well yeah, I, I think it's going to end, the, gov- the government's going to prevail. You know the government is going to is going to win this. Uh, the people, our rights. You know this is our our land, our federal land, it belongs to all of us. We trust. You know we entrust those rights. You know our power to the government through our elected representatives, and you know they empower the various agencies of the federal government to uh, to manage that for us. Uh, this. This gentleman, Mr. Bundy, is in the wrong. 
you guys are on the wrong side of this, and I, I think it's just it's not going to turn out well. You know, I think if you if you if you think you're gonna you're going to stand up against you know the United States government, us, the people, you know, you don't represent. I think that that you've got this misconception that you that, that there's some sort of silent majority of people that stand behind you that believe, but it's not. It, it, you represent an extreme minority opinion, and and I think that as time goes on you're going to start realizing this. You, there's a reason why you've been shuttered off to these, you know, fringes. And, and that's because people don't tolerate your kind of shit. This isn't going to end well. Mr. Bundy is in the wrong. You're in the wrong. You've chosen the wrong thing to rally around. You've got the facts all backwards. And I, I think you're going to be really sorely disappointed when this ends in a fizzle. Uh, no, actually, that's our goal. So thanks for chiming in, Chief. Uh, that's exactly what we're trying to do is make sure this turns into nothing. Obviously, you haven't been paying attention, and uh, the number to play back the remainder of this conversation, we've uh, been on for uh, two days now. Uh, on and well, off. You know, I have heard that. I've, I've been listening. I've been keeping up with this. And, All right. So and, and you, well, I can say I, 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 I appreciate I applaud you trying to keep things civil. But it sounds like a lot of these people that you're talking to tonight are spoiling for a fight. The people that are going out there are spoiling for a fight. And it, that is it, not going to... Come on, man. What? You're, you're, you're actually heckling me right now. So, you know, I'm just trying to do the right thing. I've asked you to back off the phone already. Half these people can't hear what you're babbling sorry, about sorry. right now. I'm, I'm uh, sorry about I, that. It, know, I've got a very sensitive you microphone. A, you see, you're, you're, you're a pessimist, and uh, we're hoping for a, a peaceful outcome. That's, that's, all, that's all we want. At least as far as I know, I don't speak for everybody. I know that's what I want. That's what uh, a lot of people that have keyed in want. Unfortunately, there are some hotheads out there, and we're just trying to kind of help resolve that situation. Is there something wrong with that? No, I, I think that if you want things to be resolved peacefully, that's great, you know, and, and I can respect that. But these right, people well, that are going out there... Approach, uh, reconsider your approach next time. Next caller. Sorry about that, I'm, Whatever you just had to say, it was kind of rude, and I need to move on to somebody that's uh, trying to move forward. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let the, let the next person. Uh, Cisco, you're, you're still in queue. Are you all right, buddy? Yeah, I'm fine. I didn't, I didn't know if I was uh, like a, um, or I, I was just listening in. Um, so either yeah. way, uh, that last gentleman. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I, I've got a comment for you, sir. Um, when you just ignore what the government is doing, this is beyond just a rancher. And, and if you look at the history behind this, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, and I don't know if you know the whole story or not, but his family's been over there for longer than the U.S. government has made claim to the part of the land that he was on. So, number one, and, and you have to equate this to history. Read your history. What did they do to the American Indians? Why do you think the natives on that reservation are putting people up? Because they're fed up. They were lied to. They were cheated, just like everybody else that the government is trying to do this to. You need to understand this. And, yeah, of course, and, and Brian and his people. Hello? Yeah, where'd you go, Cisco? Oh, shit, I muted you. Sorry, hang on. All right, I thought I had ended yes, so sorry, brother. No, no, you're uh, man. I apologize. So, so but my, to continue, continue my minor tirade here, the point being, <laughs> this is beyond Clive and Bundy, and he's even stated it. I've seen videos of him in... Uh, city council meetings stating this. It's beyond him. The point being is the federal government has lied. First they claimed it was tortoises, right? So I guess it started in 93 when he was having some, paying some fees to them for, you know, being able to use some of the land or whatever, so his cattle partially went on their land. He's still got his own, his own land that he's on, and from what it looks like, Pretty moon out they're trying to deliver. Huh, I'm sorry? I'm sorry, I didn't know if you said anything, Brian, here. But the, the, the point being is, go back to the history of this nation. The federal government has numerous times made policies and uh, what it, treaties with American Indians, lied to them, changed the rules, and took things from them using their claim of eminent domain. Yep. So, and that's why they're it, still willing to open their doors uh, for refugees. They've been here before, buddy. And they understand. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. and so, and, uh, but, but, 
but the point being yeah but but the, but the point being is there is a reason why I'm going to say this to this gentleman. This is why Brian and his other and the other militia members that have taken and put their necks out, not to get into a fight, but to basically stand up and prove a point to the government to say, "Look, we're done with this. We're fed up." Right. And, and they've got the government. They've got other government officials listening in on them, and they're going to go there and visit. So, uh, all you do is to support them, read your history, understand what the reason is. It's beyond Clive Bundy. So I'll, I'll can, I in? can I chime in? Can I chime in? Uh, yeah, it's just putting you back on mute, brother. Thanks for speaking up. Go ahead. May I may, may I chime in? Uh, first off, I want to say uh, I'm I'm from East Texas. Uh, definitely, definitely a patriot. Uh, I try to be as optimistic as I possibly can be. Uh, but just like the gentleman you were just talking to, you have to go back into the history. And it's, it's, April is not a pretty month in the history of the United States, and it's a scary situation, you know, going on here right now. I think for a lot of people that want a peaceful resolve to this, and if it goes down the way history has gone down, it will not go pretty. And that's a scary, scary thought. I, I totally agree, man. And, uh, again, that's all I think we're all hoping for, for the most part, uh, most of us. Can't speak for everybody. There are some hotheads here that want to go game on. Uh, we had right. a couple martyrs that, that chimed in yesterday that want to go out as a martyr, and you know they had the balls to say, uh, you know, "I'm a 60 some odd year old man. I don't really care anymore. I'll, I'll go out and play the glory." Blah blah blah. These are the guys that we don't need there right now. <laughs> right. Right. Um, if, if you're going to go out I, like that, man, there's going to be problems. And that's my, exactly my what we're trying to avoid. My my thought about this is is the again like I say the scary thought is it's it's never it's never the people standing up for what's right that starts it everybody wants the peaceful resolve everybody you know I would of course like you just said hotheads and people that just are ignorant but everybody starts off with that peaceful resolve and it's always been I'm not trying to be that way but it's always been the government that has overstepped it's always been they you know what I'm saying that do the proverbial first bad shot. And, you know, <laughs> people are not hotheads, but you make them that way, and something like that starts, and there it goes. It steamrolls. And, again, I say it's April. April, here we go. We have Easter Sunday coming up here, you know, in another little bit over a week. And April 18th, 19th, 20th, you know, they're not pretty days. And I'm just worried. I'm, I'm, I haven't. I've been listening for a couple hours. I haven't. I know I need to go back and listen from the beginning. I don't know if anybody's covered this topic, but you know, it's it, again. I just say it's a horrific thought to think about what could come because April's bad, man. Yeah, it definitely looks bad. Uh, we pre- uh, mentioned before, you know, we have uh, American Spring was kind of around the corner, so this feels like a precursor. Uh, to, to what we're going to see here. If anything, this gives everybody just a little bit of practice uh, to know what to expect, you know, and uh, so far so good. Uh, we don't have anything to do with that. We've got, uh, you know, they're making the proper precautions to uh, observe and control the situation had there been a situation. Now, if our people know not to start a situation, there won't be no situation. Is kind of what right, we're right, 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 right. <laughs> If everybody sticks to what the uh, uh, ranchers want, is to be just a uh, purely peaceful, uh, you know, protest which, and which, offer uh, security, uh, offer security to the land in some way, shape, or form. Um, I heard the water was cut off to the property recently. Um, I can't 100% confirm that, but a couple people signed forward with that. And uh, right. you know, we, they, they're going to need supplies. There. There's already approximately that we can estimate around 200 there. Uh, there was uh, up, up to 700-ish that I, I can wow. not exactly verify, but a lot wow. of people have said they're sending people out that way. So we're just thinking, hey, if they have the place, if, if, if what is being reported is true and they're actually searching people and, uh, you know, uh, confiscating weapons, uh, we, we need to make sure that there's a secondary rally point outside of that parameter. Uh, oh, God. We're trying to yeah. We're trying to get some locals to chime in. Um, we've got a couple of timelines that we're working on from different states that they coordinated outside of this phone call uh, just for CCOM. And then uh, as far as those reports, uh, that's the only thing I can really give you. If you know any ham uh, operators right now, 
Um, they also have a secondary going on, which it, it comes, man. You can only give out so much and other things you can't backups, give out. Backups, man. Backups to backups, <laughs> you know? Exactly. So 443.80 uh, is what's going on there locally. That we need people to open up their repeaters just in case comms do go down. Uh, at least we can have that as a last resort. You're looking for KF5 CYG, uh, KF5 CYG, and uh, I'll just not repeat that. They'll catch on to it. We'll have to move that, uh, those numbers on again later. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let the next person uh, speak unless you have something else to say. I'm sorry. Uh, I just want to thank the communications officer here. Uh, <coughs> Norris, can you hear me? Hello? Uh, Norris, go ahead. Yeah, I'm the uh, New York State uh, uh, Oath Keepers Communications Officer. Uh, another stage right now, we're monitoring uh, 14.345 megahertz and 21.345 megahertz. These are emergency communications frequencies that we are monitoring at this time. Uh, uh, actually, hang on one second. Comms, comms 1, comms 3. Area 1, one. Area 3. You're both on right now. Write that down. I want you to go ahead and repeat that loud and clear sir, so comms can get that down. Roger that. That is a 14.345 megahertz and 21.345 Five megahertz, both USB simplex. We're on HF. I've got two secretaries, uh, two secretaries on right now. If you guys uh, grab your pens and go ahead and grab that down for me. Um, my hands are a little tied right now. If uh, somebody can go ahead and send that to me as a message directly in a minute. Um, Thomas is going to want to get a hold of you, sir. Uh, can you put up any uh, an email uh, to contact you directly? Seems like you're going to be a lot of help with the cost. If I know where to send an email to, I will. I do not. I don't have an email address. If you can send me an email address, I'll send it right to you. Um, does the phone that you're on have text capability? Uh, yes, it does. You want me to text that for you? Um, I'm going to go ahead and send you a direct line. And uh, uh, in a little bit, is, is that okay? Uh, yeah, it's got to be soon. I, I've been up for hours here. I'm, uh, I've been trying to get a net together across the state, uh, across the country and state. Uh, but yeah, please contact me. All right, fair enough. Uh, I'll stay here for. Sir, you just became Comms Four, okay? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Comms One, I'm gonna. Text Comms one is going to contact you. Comms one, I hope you're still on. I see Comms two. Uh, I'm expecting to get you uh, some co some connection here in the near future. Uh, stand by, all right? Stand by. Thank you. I'm going to actually leave you on, sir. If, uh, if you get a, a text in the next little bit, just let me know that uh, that, that was verifiable. Um, all right. Moving on. Roger. I'll stand by waiting, and I'll let you know. Uh, wireless caller nine seven zero eight. Wireless caller nine seven zero eight year ago. Mm -hmm. All right, you got five seconds. Wireless caller ending in nine seven zero eight. If you want to unmute yourself or uh, keep your mind around, mm -hmm. move on to the next. All right. Not bad. Bye bye now. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open this up to another wireless caller seven two two five. What's going on? Hello. Yeah, you're on. Hi, I just want to add two things to uh, bring up right now. I just want to let you know that we're streaming this conference call and uh, on YouTube, Google+. And it's, uh, the search is Bundy Ranch Militia Oak Keepers Conference Call. And anyone who doesn't want to be on the call can type that in, and you can listen to it live on stream. Awesome, awesome. And I have one more thing yeah. to say. That was really cool of you. Uh, what do you represent, brother? Are you just doing that on your own free will, or are you with a group? Uh, no, um, I'm in a group called Co Cosmic Voice, and uh, we're just, you know, we're supporting and doing our thing because we're all about freedom. So, that's how many people you in your that? How many people in your reach, sir? I'm gonna go with four thousand, about in our group, and right, we're 
We're doing thing, my last thing I wanted to say is uh, you have the spiritual you? community group with you guys, and uh, we're watching over you. So keep doing hey, what you're doing. Will you repeat your uh, Google site? Uh, give me one second. Let me get back on that. It's Bundy Ranch Militia and Oath Keepers Conference Call. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, that's really cool of you. Um, so you sound like a responsible and you've got a good network. Are you prior military or? Uh, my dad was, but I'm just a, I'm a, I'm a light warrior just doing what I do. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of us out there watching over you guys, and we're praying for you. So much respect and love, no doubt. I, pre- I appreciate you, brother. Um, I'm going to actually ask if there's an email that you could put up right now for comms one through four to contact you. Uh, I'm happy to designate you under comms five. Is that fair? Uh, sh- sure. Uh, uh, how do I get my, my email out? Add yourself to the network. Uh, Peter, are you still here? Yeah, I'm still here. All right. Um, can you grab this gentleman's email if you don't mind giving that over? Yeah. It's uh it's K K S I L V A forty four forty four at yahoo.com. Did you copy that? K S I I V A four four No, it's K S I L V A forty four forty four at yahoo.com. Hey Silver forty four forty four at yahoo.com. Yes. Glad you got it. All right. Much love, guys. Right. Appreciate what you're doing. Yep. All right. Appreciate okay. you for signing in. Uh, you're now in that direct connection. Um, I'm moving on to the next thought. Wireless 765, you got 15 Uh Edmonton, you were on earlier. We got a lot of static from you, and I needed you again. Uh, 2361, you're on, and you're engaged. Hello? Yep, we, we got you. I think you're eating a bag of chips and I muted you earlier. Sorry about that, man, but go ahead. Hello? Yeah, is it me? Yeah, yeah, that's you. I think you guys should be definitely worried about chemtrails over the Bundy Ranch. They use that for mind control experiments. Yeah, okay, appreciate that. <laughs> Moving on to the next guy. Sorry, man. Way off subject there. Uh, where this caller? Eight seven two four. Go ahead. Hi, this is Wolf from West Virginia. First off, I want to thank everybody out there for doing what you're doing. It really shows that there are people who are awake and aware of what's going on and aren't afraid to stand their ground. Um, to the <laughs> to the last caller. Um, as for the chemtrails, I don't really know what the true purpose of that is. I know it's not good. Um, definitely don't know about the whole mind control thing. <laughs> um, there is one major thing that does concern me, though. Um, one of the callers earlier was talking, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, about Department of Homeland Security agents maybe making an appearance. Was that correct? Uh, not totally confirmable yet, but there's definitely some talk in that direction. Uh, we're not positive if that source is, you know, I saw something on Facebook right now. is isn't really cutting it. Okay. Um, oh man, the one thing that really worries me right now is just breaking out of control. I don't want to see that happen. You know, I'd rather see everything get resolved peacefully. Um, I totally agree one, with you. The one thing I do really want to state, it was to the, this, by the way, is to the gentleman that was talking earlier. Um, as for everybody that's out there, you know, I mean, there have been two or three people that have already said, you know, when corrupt governments, you know, start doing exactly what's going on right now, we have a responsibility as American citizens to stand our ground and make corrections where needed. Um, and on that topic, and I don't know if you guys have heard anything or if this could even be confirmed, there was a mass outbreak of information, part of it through Facebook, part of it through other online sites, is anybody aware of any clause or any type of contract within the Constitution that states if two-thirds of the states, um, uh, I'm kind of sketchy on the details, so correct me if I'm wrong or if you do know anything about it. The rumor was that if two-thirds of the states 
um, want to convene what was called, I believe, a constitutional conference. Yeah. Uh, uh, preach on, brother. This is pretty important. Go ahead. What do you got? If, if what's being said is true, if two-thirds of the state agree to this con- um, constitutional conference, what I've read and been told was that once this goes through, that these people that are over through the states, um, whether it be through state senators or the head leaders of the militia, can actually go in there and amend the Constitution. Does anybody know anything about this? I mean, is this just rumor? Uh, I can give you your opinion then. Uh, I can definitely give you opinion. I, uh, I joined in on the Illinois end of that. I did not take a leadership position, but I am watching uh, where they're going with that. Um, I I want to say on one end, personally, uh, I feel that it's a great idea. It's something that could bring the states together to reinforce their power against the Fed. The problem which happens is it opens a very big Pandora's box. Mm-hmm. Once there's been a convention, you've got a lot of liberal states. No offense if you're a liberal on the phone right now, but... No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I, there's a lot of people listening right now that may may have that frame of mind. Um, but basically what I'm getting at is that opens a big Pandora's box. Once you're able to actually have a quorum of states that have opened up that box, a lot of things can change. A lot of things can change for the better, but a lot of things could change for the worse. Do we see it as a potential solution? Absolutely. But I honestly, personally, uh, you know, considering my perceptions in uh, Illinois, there's a lot of uh, bad people running these states. That, that, mm-hmm. And I'm sorry if I say bad people. There's a lot of people that aren't sticking to their oath that are making bad decisions and taking back pocket uh, uh, influence to do so. And uh, unfortunately, if we open up that Pandora's box, that gives a perfect chance and opportunity uh, you know, for the shining, shining uh, supporters uh, and influencers to uh, really dig deep into their pockets and uh, create some very, very bad change. I know we're already kind of headed on that path, so it seems like a last resort uh, uh, type of uh, resolution. But uh, in, in my eyes, you know, the whole voting thing obviously has not worked in the best interest of, uh, you know, the constitutional folk like everybody that's chimed in today. Um, you know, that could open a very bad box. And, and I, it's one box where it could potentially, if it's handled correctly, uh, it could change America for the better forever. Uh, again, once that box has been opened, the, the other end of the spectrum is a lot of bad people could chime in real fast, change a lot of things, and uh, it, it would change this country even further, faster overnight uh, than we would want to. And uh, I think you know, priority, prioritizing would be to get some more people that we can trust into politics. But uh, as of right now, how's that working for us? I'm going to go ahead and throw something out there, and I figure with the topic that we're already on, some people may already be thinking of. Um, I know you said that this can go either way if something like that does happen. You know, after I got thinking about it, if something like this does go into effect, my first step, my first thought and my first question is going to be, okay, how is the federal government going to respond to this? We've already seen their, their actions, um, you know, between what's going on currently there in Nevada um, you know, among other things, I, I don't know. It's not looking good. Uh, I'm going to have to agree with you, brother. Um, we're just trying to do the best we can. That's why people are on this call. So, you know, if you've got any people that uh, are boots on the ground, send them to this call. Uh, we're going to put them in the queue and try to get uh, try to get them on the line so we can get more information. And uh, we're definitely recommending that active duty military of all branches please chime in in the near future. We need to know what's uh, being thought. You know, of our of our brothers that are troops right now that are live, uh, and they're going to be boots on the ground. If, uh, hopefully, they're not. You know, it, but if people are being deployed, kind of got to know what's on their mind, and nobody wants any trouble. So um, that's kind of where we're going. The only people that seem to want to have trouble is the uh, the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management for Nevada. And uh, I'm going to move on to the next caller unless you got something else real quick. All right. Well, I want to thank you for taking my call. I wish you all the best, and I hope everything gets resolved peacefully. Thank you very much. God bless all the soldiers and everybody that's out there in Nevada right now. May you all stay safe. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, okay. Ben. Ryan, this is Pete. Uh, hey, Pete I have go to ahead. Take, I take off here. Um, 
Yeah, hold this number and text me. I'll be in contact with you uh, whenever you can there, and uh, I'll put whatever information we have. It's probably better to t uh, text the information anyway. All right, I appreciate it. We're still over 150 people, so I'm going to keep this call going, man. Um, at, at some point, it's going to make me shut down the recording and open it up again, and then we'll keep moving on into uh, uh, audio keys uh, so you can call back and play back that stuff. But if you've got any way to download the previous conversations, I recommend uh, this is all free reign. You can invite anybody you want, and you can definitely uh, record this and broadcast it anywhere else. It's free reign right now. Roger that. I'll, I'll, I'll stop in again, and uh, you'll probably hear from more of us up here in New York. Thank you, Brian, right, and gentlemen, you. and thank you for the network there. You're doing quite a uh, good job. All good, sir. Keep sending them this way. Thank you. Um, I'm going to open this up to uh, 5516. You still there? 5516. You still there? You got five seconds to respond. All right, that's negatory. Peter, you're still on the line. I'm going to meet you up, though. All right. Engage. Uh, last four digits, uh, 3890, you're on. Oh, I'm, I'm still listening. I, I talked to you earlier about uh, April, you know. I, I'm still listening. All right, 10-4, I'm going to pull you out of the queue if you don't mind. No, no, go for it. Uh, anonymous caller, I don't know your number, but if you just heard unmuted, uh, you're on. Ah, hello there. I'm uh, Morris with the um, Eastern Druidic Order of the Americas, and we've been hearing about this very dreadful situation. I've been praying intently for these poor ranchers and the return of their property and cattle. It's a very strange and disturbing thing to us to see so many lost in such a such a simple and strange matter. We'll be making sacrifice for you this uh, morn at about um, sunup. We'll be sacrificing 23 goats in the honor of this cause and in hopes that the cattle are returned to their proper owners and that this matter is settled peaceably. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, we needed a little bit of humor. I appreciate that, man. Was there anything actually pertinent on your mind? Or, uh, Nothing. You guys this is a very serious matter. These were some very good goats that we're putting to this cause. I truly hope that you understand that we don't take this very lightly. We feel it's very important that this herd of cattle be head of cattle be returned to their owners, true and proper, and that this matter be ended without bloodshed or harm to anyone. And oh we will God. be making sacrifice at sunup. Well, that's all. Right. all. Thanks for chiming in, man. I actually kind of needed that. You got me laughing over here. I appreciate that. You kind of lighten it up around here. Uh, it's a of good dawn and shine on you. Good day. <laughs> take care. Obviously, we can't take that seriously. I wish you would have had something important to say, but uh, that was pretty humorous. Thanks, man. I feel like freaking mad call baller right now. I'm going to open this up to uh, another wireless caller. Uh, Deborah, are you on? Uh, Deborah went by last. Deborah, you can pop back into the queue. Uh, I'm going to try to find you. Sorry about that. Uh, wireless caller. Uh, 8587, go ahead. Yep, it's me. It's Bill again, California. All right. How uh, you doing? Bill D. Gerolamo. Sure, man. Uh, did you have anything to add while I got you in the queue? Yeah, yeah. You know, but you were just talking about the Constitutional uh, Convention. Yeah, it wasn't originally what I wanted to talk about, but it just had come up, so here it is. And it's important, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. It's important, right? Oh, it's very important, and it's also very dangerous, like you're saying. And I think that what has to be taken into account here first, because you know these guys are getting a lot of free rides, is that we have the uh, corrections before we can allow these people uncorrected to make those kinds of decisions or even participate. Because as it is right now, we already have two people. We already have too many of the states and all of the representatives outside of their constitutional restrictions, <clears throat> and there's risk having those people make these kinds of decisions. <clears throat> Excuse me, one second, please. No, I, I highly agree with you, man. I, I, obviously, you're having some problems. Go ahead, take a glass of water. I'll chime in. And, and, and again, just like I said, you're right. That's opening up Pandora's box, man. Um, I, you know, it would be great if we could pre-write, you know, what would happen and then implement, you know, a strategy. But, you know, people have been trying to open up, you know, 
parties, which unfortunately got railroaded. Uh, unfortunately, you know, other groups have come forward, libertarian parties, which only becomes infiltrated. And uh, you know, it seems like as a collective, we all know what we're all striving for, but unfortunately, there's some very uh, high up and powerful, powerful people uh, making sure that's not going to happen anytime soon. You know, and they just keep voting their friends into power, so it only strengthens their bond. And uh, it is what well, it for, is, you know. Well, yeah. And for example, the BLM, I mean, there's not even a, a place for that or that kind of uh, control. Or you, know, you had this offensive gentleman that uh, got pretty rude with you that uh, you'd cut off a little bit ago with his statements about, you know, it being the government and, you know, them having this power. Well, they have power to govern granted by us but it's only they only have 18 basic powers most of all of this constitution limits them it doesn't enable them <clears throat> and the problem that we're having is it's an actual overreach everything that they're about there's no there's no in inclusion or allowance for anything that we see happening right now if you look at uh, article 1 section 8 there's there's nothing there for them to be doing and overreaching like they are in any way, shape, or form with any lands outside of the District of Columbia. <clears throat> they can't own anything. And if it's in trust, they can't make the decisions to be selling it. So, I mean, we have a lot of broad overreach that we need to be protective of. But the situation with... Um, Excuse me, I was choking on a pretzel just before you picked me up. I was thinking, wow, what if he picks me up now? And here you did. <laughs> but um, one of the things that I wanted to, to touch on earlier that I, I kind of missed was about the people, because, I mean, it, it is important that we keep this peaceful, is that with the Oath Keepers and Sheriff Mack, I know you wanted to get uh, Kessel on. I'll try to text him, although it's pretty late there. It's almost 5 in the morning for him. Uh, I've got uh, Sheriff Mack's uh, wife and his uh, personal cell phone number. Uh, they have not chimed in yet. And, and uh, obviously they're probably sleeping right now. So right, I'm going to yeah. try that uh, uh, approximately uh, 8 to 9 Central tomorrow if I can make that happen uh, right. at some point and, and see if no. uh, I can get somebody on the phone. Um, pretty much uh, say what you need to say, brother. I'm not trying to scoot you along. I appreciate everything you're doing. I just got uh, no, 38 people in the queue right now. Yeah, just one thing, um, and then I'll get out of here. Um, about tomorrow, there had been, uh, you had a lieutenant colonel who said that he was. Hello? Hey, man, I didn't do that. Hello? Hello? Oh, man, I'm sorry. You just cut out completely, bro. Ah, sorry, I got to move on to the next guy. Uh, private caller 0063. Engaged. Hello. Yeah, you're on, buddy. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to say thank you uh, for what you're doing. Uh, I've been listening now for probably about four or five hours. Uh, you've given us a great deal of information. Uh, I've got a couple buddies looking to head down there beginning of next week. And, you know the information you've given will help them out. I appreciate it. Uh, next thing is, uh, after this is all done and over with, uh, do you plan on keep, do you plan to keep on doing this? You know, to, uh, to the best that I can, man, uh, you know, my, uh, my wife, for example, works late, just came home looking at me like I'm a retard, does not understand what's going on right now. And I, I kind of feel bad, but I'm, I'm going to do my best to kind of keep this going. I'm actually working on secondary moderators uh, that can figure out the software and know how to utilize that and maybe run the conversation while I'm gone. I, I've got some things to take care of tomorrow night, but uh, I'm, I'm, it's the weekend, man. I, I don't have a problem, uh, you know, after I go to bed here in the near future, you know, turning this back on, you know, sometime midday tomorrow uh, if possible, uh, depending on, you know, what plans are. But I'm trying to get, you know, somebody else uh, that I actually know that I can trust uh, to kind of help take over uh, some secondary uh, implementations of the software and, you know, running a call and knowing how to handle a, a conversation like an adult and, uh, you know, try to help keep everybody on the same page. And obviously, I'm coordinating a variety of teams right now that are uh, 
that are coming in uh, with all kinds of information left and right, as you can tell I'm reading some right now. But uh, you know, and also knowing the names in the, in the network and, and try to, you know, it, it's a task, man. But I totally appreciate uh, you know the accommodations there, and uh, it means a lot, man. I'm just trying right. to help. Have you know, that's all I can do, man. I'm gonna move on to the next call. I really appreciate you, man. Uh, open call for five eight one seven. Go ahead. Hey, you had a call earlier asking about what time they were meeting at the ranch tomorrow, and they said they're meeting over at the flagpoles where the protesters are. Okay, flagpole at the ranch tomorrow. You got an ETA on that as far uh, as what nine time? It says tomorrow at 9 a.m. We want people, we want as many people there as possible. We want all the news people that can be there too to show up as well. We will be doing uh, we will be doing this at the flagpoles at the protesting area. Thank you so much. Keep the spreading, and it's on the Bundy hold Ranch. Up, hold, on. hold on, I need to ask you a question. Are you on the ground right now, man? I'm in Colorado. I'm a civilian. Uh, okay. Are you heading I'm, that way, or no? I'm just watching everything online and just keeping track of stuff. So you can confirm that majority of who's already there, and hope, can you confirm that people can still get there? Well, this is what's saying on the Bundy Ranch website or their their Facebook account. They're telling people that the meeting is tomorrow, and they're saying that's where they want people to meet. All if right, you go to fair Bundy enough. Ranch Facebook. Flagpole tomorrow, nine o'clock. Correct. Yes. All right. Well, all you people that know somebody that's got boots on the ground that are still trying to, we've got almost 150 people here. Um, definitely spread the word. Meet them at the flagpole tomorrow if they're on the inside. Uh, come as a peaceful protester, bring supplies, and I uh, appreciate you chiming in, man. Thank you. Have a good night. And of course, be with you. All right, moving on. Last name uh, starts with the J6585. You want to chime in? Oh, is that me? Yeah, that'd be you. How are you doing today? No, um, okay, perfect timing. I was about to hang up. Uh, I just wanted to type in because several people have brought up history and. I agree the history is extremely important. What we've got right now is a big fire that's blown up, and that obviously has to be dealt with. You know, we need boots on the ground. We need logistics positioned. We need all of these sorts of things. But I think that people are intending to be in this for the long haul. They really need to be aware of the fact that this is a fight that's actually been going on for over 100 years. A lot of people are not aware of the Sagebrush Rebellion that started in the 1890s. And if they even look it up, you know, the victor tends to write the history books. And to make a very long and complicated story short, it was the East versus the West, and the East basically won. Uh, they were the statists who wanted to control the West. The West wasn't having any part of it. It was full of Clive and Bundy's. And the East put us down. I'm from Oregon. I'm a third generation Oregonian, by the way. Um, and it simmered, and it set very poorly with most of us Westerners for a long time. And those of you, I'm about the Bundy's ages, so okay. I, I lived through a lot of this stuff. Like there was a Sage Rush Rebellion under Carter in the 70s that a lot of people in the 40s and 50s may remember, but they not, may not be aware of the fact that that was simply a flare-up of something that had been going on for almost 100 years. Excuse me, 100 years. And if people understand the context of the way that the government has been uh, manipulating and stealing property rights, both from the American Indians and from the American public, you know, for, for this entire period of time, I think it'll give them a better perspective on what they're dealing with now, and they're going to be a lot less likely to, if we do get the result we anticipate, which is, you know, a calm, peaceful protest at the Bundy Ranch, and presumably their personal situation will be resolved. That is only one situation of many that have been going on since the end of the 19th century. Uh, this is a very long war, and what we're dealing with right now is a very fiery battle in a long war. And I really hope that people will, uh, as you said, they say at work, Google their shit 
and uh, and find out about the the two sage brush rebellions and understand how we got here from there and how we can keep it from happening again. Well, that was a mouthful, man. I really appreciate what you said to say. Um, it's nice to have a lot of female energy, and you've obviously got some wind, uh, wisdom under your wing. And, uh, you know, as you're right, as history shows, we need to learn by what we've done in the past and uh, you know, work, work towards a better future. And, unfortunately, other people are trying to hinder that for America right now. And there's no question from many different aspects. Um, so I appreciate you chiming in. If you want to come back again later, uh, Ms. J, uh, you feel free to do so. I appreciate you. Well, I certainly appreciate everything you folks are doing. I just, I don't want it. Oh, sorry, ma'am. I pressed next call. I thought you were done. I totally apologize. Uh, I've got somebody else open at 2767. Still there? All right, I'm going to move on. Uh, 7687, you're chiming in. Oh, hello. There you go. Sorry All right. Wait. <clears throat> I want to reiterate. Hi, how are you? Hey. I want to reiterate on what he was talking about the Constitutional Convention. Yes. Right. Um, there was news posted approximately four days ago on several sites that they decided to have a Constitutional Convention, which Michigan was the 34th state, which made it a two-thirds rule. And they can change the entire constitution under that. Nothing is off limits. Right. That's kind of what we were kind of worrying about. Um, although I, I, I can't say that we need to necessarily change the constitution, but there need to be amendments that still work in the Well, we don't want to change it. They're going to do no. it with us no, no. not knowing. <laughs> we don't I, get I, to I vote on that. They're just going to do it. You're right. The constitution... It, it, oh man, and, and you know, I'm trying to really thin ground and a really thin fence by saying this. The Constitution is as perfect as it was for that time, and there needs to be a couple of finalities in there that maybe they might have overlooked because if they had not, the government wouldn't be able to do what it's doing right now. So if yes, there were, I um, totally understand what you're saying, but the sheeple don't even care, and nobody's going to know or get to vote on anything that they change. Well, in total, during these conference calls, we've had over a thousand people chime in from all over. So I do think there are people. I know we're a very small percentage, but uh, you know, there were a lot of leaders that have a lot of uh, a lot of cloud out there that have been chiming in, and uh, I'm hoping those numbers are a lot higher than you know what we think it is. But uh, yeah, I, I would just like to see that if that Pandora's box is open, it, it obviously works in the people's favor uh, overall in general as a whole. I think there should be higher penalties for. Uh, treason and easier routes so that these alphabet agents can't work around, um, you know, really crappy. Uh, exactly. You, you know, it, it, there needs to be a, a harsher sentence for people that have truly violated their oaths completely, that are selling out America left and right, that are, uh, you know, imposing more treason, and that the are the ones that are doing that the worst are the ones that are in appointed positions in government, in my opinion. Oh, the, they're all worms, and they're really good at hiding in the dirt, you know, and. Uh, hard to trace back a lot of things and don't think that's by mistake or by chance. And, uh, well, the other thing I want to also bring up is um, the Harry Reid thing. Go ahead. He, he sold that land two years ago to the Chinese and these, but the Bundys are the last ones to, to give out to his whole thing, and I think that's one of the reasons why they're making this a big deal is because, and, and this isn't the, this is happening in Texas. This isn't the only one that they're trying to take land in Texas already. I, I mean, this is just a start of so many more things to come. And, and if we want to see this be peaceful, I heard earlier when I was listening in on the call that there were, um, foreign people that were posing as Jim Smith or whatever name, this has to have something to do with it. The, the land is sold. He sold it. And they're just trying to figure out a way to get him off the property. And I really think it's another way for them to try to 
test the waters for a a whole worldwide or countrywide militia movement. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to go ahead and agree with you. We, we pretty much uh, earlier on uh, in previous portions of this call have kind of agreed to a couple times now that this really just seems like an inkling for some sort of eminent domain where, hey, this is the property they want. They're going to take it any which way they want. If they have to use their bureaucracy and find a guy because his cows are eating too much grass, you know, and now he owes them money, you know, it just gets really ridiculous. They're obviously, you know, making a lot of people broke really quick and obviously taking their, uh, um, you know, capabilities to generate income away and just forcing them into, you know, bankruptcy. And this is being confirmed in the region at other locations. Um, this is uh, actually, uh, we're calling Ground Zero One right now, but there's actually uh, Ground Zero up to point five right now um, of other locations where similar things have occurred recently. Um, but we'd like to uh, put more uh, information out there and, and find more people who on the ground exactly to, uh, you know, determine you know, what phase uh, of this land grab that they, they might as well be in as well. Um, it's just come up before we kind of determined that it turns into uh, oil once again and it turns into uh, water once again and uh, it turns into, uh, you know, ground nutrients and precious metals and things of that nature. And... Uh, it seems that the orders come upon uh, from up high from the military is why the Bureau of Land Management is acting the way they are, completely outside their authority. And that they've hired some extra agents uh, to help out with personnel. Apparently, nobody can verify what kind of contractors they are. But you know, we've got a uh, you know, and I apologize if anybody's of Middle Eastern descent on this call. But you know, if, if your name's Ahmed Papa Papa, keep them title for a and and your stuff says Jones on the name tag. Um, I, I, I don't credit you, you know, and, and at this point, if you're standing there with a gun in my face uh, in America on, on our property, I don't care if you're wearing a blue helmet or not, um, you're working for the wrong people, and uh, it's unfortunate that, you know, we, we have to kind of... Well, they're looking stuff. for a reason. They're looking for a reason, and I think that anybody who pays attention to anything knows that. All right, well, there's some politicians on their way. We've confirmed Richard Mack is on scene. But uh, he's probably taking a nap right now, I hope, because uh, I know I'm going to rattle his cage the uh, first chance I get tomorrow. Um, I'm going to move on to the next call. we got uh, 20 people. In the right on. Have a good night. Thank you. Sorry, i got another wireless caller on. Hello. Uh, 